Jacob Sidlecki. I am an ophthalmologist currently working at the University Hospital in Munich, Germany, and I specialize in vas uh, vascular diseases of the retina. I do basic research and clinical research mainly now on the field of age-related macular degeneration. It's mainly neovascular form and on pachychorid diseases. Hi, welcome. What did you present at AAO this year? At the AO, we present our data on the influence of a newly started anti-VEGF therapy on primary geographic atrophy in age-related macular degeneration. And uh, performing this study, we tried to invert the way we usually look at anti-VEGF and its influence on macular atrophy. Usually, since the CAT finding in 2012, people have been discussing the debate and there's lots of different opinions. For example, the CAT finding in 2012 uh, reported that patients treated with ranibizumab monthly as compared to bevacizumab as needed uh, had 25 versus 12 percent macular atrophy so there was the first uh, the first data that anti-VEGF might drive macular atrophy and starting from that point people have been discussing for the past years whether anti-VEGF might worsen macular atrophy if you treat patients too much and we try to invert the way we look at anti-VEGF and the influence of anti-VEGF on macular atrophy by not looking at neovascular AMD that develops atrophy, but by looking at primarily dry AMD, which had already established geographic atrophy, which then in the second step develop, developed a secondary CNV, which was then treated by anti-VEGF. And what were your findings? We had to screen a huge database of 1,632 eyes to find 10 eyes that were suitable for our primary inclusion criteria, which included primarily geographic atrophy, which was documented in OCT and blew out of fluorescence for at least one year, which then in the second step developed a neovascular conversion, developed a secondary CNV, which was then treated with anti-VEGF. And these patients also had to have documented follow-up concerning the growth of the geographic atrophy for another year. And in these eyes, we found that the mean average enlargement rate was 1.5 square millimeters per year. And when we looked at the enlargement rate before CNV and after CNV, these were not statistically significantly different. It was 1.4 versus 1.6 square millimeters per year. So from this, even if it's a small sample size, we deduce that anti-VEGF might not have a big influence, or at least in our study does not have an influence on the enlargement of geographic atrophy. And to further the analysis, we also looked at the partner eyes of the eyes that converted into neovascular AMD, and there was no significant difference in between the growth rate of geographic atrophy in the dry eye and the second eye, partner eye, which then developed neovascular AMD and was treated with anti-VEGF. We also tried to look at a analysis of um, anti-VEGF intensity. So we looked at the individual growth rate ratio. We tried to classify per eye how the speed, the growth rate of geographic atrophy changed after the diagnosis of CNV. And we just achieved this basic number by dividing the post-CNV or post-CNV enlargement rate divided by the pre-CNV enlargement rate. So if it was 1.5 millimeters after CNV diagnosis and one a square millimeter per year before diagnosis, this would be an increase of 50%. In looking at these eyes, we saw that some eyes speeded up their enlargement rate by about 40%, and some slowed it down by about 40%. And we correlated that with the anti-VEGF intensity, and we did not find a significant correlation. So the amount of anti-VEGF injections given, which were uh, 5 to 16 injections over a mean follow-up of five years were not significantly associated with a change in growth rate ratio. And also looking at the baseline parameters, for example, the geographic atrophy lesion size, the lesion number, choroidal thickness and age, we did also not find an influence of these baseline factors on a change in growth rate. So we believe that the CNV that is happening in such eyes with primarily geographic atrophy does not have a major influence on the GA enlargement rate and also the anti-VEGF therapy does not have a big influence. So we believe that the primarily geographic atrophy eyes have certain geographic atrophy risk factors, for example, subretinal drusenoid deposits, age at diagnosis, choroidal thickness, which lead the cause for geographic atrophy enlargement. But the CNV is not the natural progression of the disease. 
it does not influence the natural progression into atrophy that much. It is simply a little detour that we treat with anti-VEGF. How do you see these findings translating into patient care? We believe that this study adds to a growing evidence of data that anti-VEGF is not necessarily a big impact on um, geographic atrophy and we believe that the discussion on fluid resolution is, is definitely a very interesting one. For example, at the moment we are discussing whether to eliminate subretinal fluid or not. But I believe that these fluid compartments contribute to geographic atrophy, but the anti-VEGF intensity does not. So I'm actually not that afraid anymore to dry a patient completely, and I do not necessarily allow for subretinal fluid because I'm afraid that if I have excess therapy, I might worsen the geographic atrophy. And what are your next steps in this line of research? So this is a very small sample size. So what we would love is to create a multi-center retrospective chart review and include more patients because we definitely have to acknowledge that the sample size that we present here is very limited. So we work on contacting centers around Europe to gain more insight into this topic and to recruit more patients. It's actually really difficult to perform a prospective trial with that setting, but maybe we'll somehow find a twist around that. It would be very interesting to examine these patients prospectively. Where can someone follow your research or get involved? So you can definitely find me on our university website. It's the University Eye Clinic of the Ludwigs Maximilians University in Munich. You can also find me on ResearchGate or via email and I'll be happy to talk to you and work on some future projects together. Thank you so much for your time and speaking with us.